This is part two of the Uriah Jokes Friday the 13th Comedy Podcast. Is this even a podcast anymore? It was just five years ago in 1980 that 13 camp counselors at Camp Caspian were hired to take care of the camp for 60 days. In the 60 days, no campers showed up at the camp. I'm a witch, I'm a witch, I'm a witch, look at me go. A shocking but interesting development for a camp using a horrifying business practice for making money. You need campers to make money, especially for a new business in an already crowded camp. Happy business. The interesting element was quickly clouded by one man with a guitar that's out of tune. Sending the interesting business practice to a spiraling chaotic murderous game of murder. Now welcome your host, Uriah Westman. A fantastic intro. You really brought some energy, which is good. But not the murder. Murder! It's never alright. But this is a fictional story, so it doesn't matter about morals because all of this isn't real. But this story is real because it's the game of murder. For this continuing story. Talk about a jumbled up beginning. I truly do have the worst taste in writers. I mean, that's... 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 And I'm the writer. So, I mean, like... I taste horrible. So now you know. Now you get it. So like it, subscribe it, and bop it. If you missed part one, don't worry. We'll have a dream flashback to bring you all up the par. Or... Just want to make sure I get hit in the head. Or you could just watch part one, link below. I mean, it's, that's easy too. You got time. There's a coronavirus, for fuck's sake. You can do whatever you want, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure you can do whatever you want now. It was five years ago that the 12 counselors that left the 13th body for dead. Left for dead or hungry animals. It depends on whether or not you're a Republican or a Democrat. Whoever got to him first in this game of death, which could have been a tiger, or it could have been a scarecrow, or it could have been a oh my. And that oh my was that the owner of the camp was Rudy Giuliani, also a vampire. Just ask the rats in New York City. They'll agree with you. He declined to be part of this podcast because I have a dick, and I refuse to meet him in a hotel room. So what are you gonna do? When the man was asked what happened by the detective, the man said diddly squat. No, he didn't say that. He said nothing. He said nothing. He said nothing like an out of work mime. He did say one thing. Give me my guitar! Like, it's not a song for you, detective. It's a song for the Ocean's Twelve. The heist that stole my voice. And they shall hear the tuning of a blade in their minds. Because I am more than a one-hit wonder. And they shall hear the turning of a blade in their minds because I am more than a one-hit wonder. I am the man who served brain trauma that is here to be known as the second hit wonder. Now you get me my fucking guitar. The man's ranting 
placed him in a mental hospital for five years. Wait, is this a is this a parody of Halloween now? Uh, who knows? This is probably just a parody of myself doing a parody of myself doing a parody of somebody who's an out of work comedian that was never in work. But let's just move on, you moron. If you are looking for a story without plot holes, why would you be watching a story on YouTube with two views and one like that is definitely the creator, me, uploading it and liking my own video? What the hell? Five years in the insane asylum is a lot of time. It's five years. The man learned how to tune a guitar, sing a hundred percent more songs, and worked with eight specialists using a therapist for brain trauma from getting hit in the head hundreds of times with bottles. Hitting hundreds of times with bottles. It wasn't all bad though. We gotta find the, the light at the end of the tunnel. He set the Guinness World Record for the most bottles to the head. While he recovered, he learned how to be a better human. Alright. And in those five years, he used the 411 information line service because it's 1985, you moron. There's no internet. He was able to find the locations of the 12 counselors that wouldn't know good music if it hit him in the head. But maybe they would know a good bottling. But he's a changed man, so all he wanted to do was play the new song that he made. He was released on October 27th, 2020. Wait, is this Halloween parody or Friday the 13th? Oh, well, only time will tell. And that makes time a snitch shot. Or, in this case, a timely murder in the Uriah Jokes Podcast Spooky Edition Part 2. Let's go. The journey begins with the man going to an open mic to dust off his guitar. Flying all the way to sunny California. Fantastic. The man knew. The man knew this time. This was his time to shine. Looking for less for revenge and blood, but more of the redemption and the blood of clapping of a live hand. Nothing like a round of applause. Redemption is a dish best served at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday open mic. Just ask me, a comedian. He quickly became nervous when it became apparently bluntly clear that there's no way he could follow whoever was on before him. That God made you. He decided this is the time to ditch the acoustic guitar and show the world this world. A coffee shop with three people in it. And he is more, more, more than a one-hit wonder. The crowd, the crowd quickly began to laugh at him, <laughs> laugh at him so much as if Uriah Westman is on stage. Yes, uh, there's a plot hole because uh, I don't get any laughs even when there's an audience. Hit that like button and we'll see what happens. Laugh, 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 laugh. Why are you people laughing at me? I am a two hit wonder. Quickly, he took out the bottle from his pocket and yelled, You made me do this! Three bottles, three kills, you're out of here, he yelled. He received a standing ovation from himself, but does that count if he's already standing? 
he now realized that gathering a standing order of a standing ovation by himself is to become the person the Ocean 12 created. An intelligent monster walked up to the bartender and said, I'm going to need to make a deposit for those thousand bottles. And the ticket to Las Vegas. Confused, the bartender said, I, I can't do any of that. I I'm, a I'm a bartender, man. And then he said, it's a bottle time! And and hit him with a bottle. The best catchphrase he could come up with, I guess. And that. With his one-way ticket to Las Vegas, it was time for him to beat the house. And this house is owned by Susie, counselor number one. Was the only one to not implicate herself in the crime because the acid trip she was on was talking to a chipmunk about the deterioration of Christian values in modern society. Whatever the hell that means. One thing is clear, a wager has been made on her life, and it's unredeemable wager because it's her life. Welcome to the fabulous Las Vegas. What happens here stays here.